Question 1. In conditions of poor visibility, when should you use your motorcycle's dipped headlights? A. Only during the day. B. Only during the night. C. At all times. Answer. C. At all times, for safety, it's essential to use dipped headlights in poor visibility conditions, whether it's day or night, to ensure other road users can see you. Question 2. Which of the following surfaces is most likely to reduce the grip for your motorcycle? A. Wet tarmac. B. Gravel. C. Freshly laid asphalt. Answer. B. Gravel. Gravel can be unstable and reduce the traction between the motorcycle's tires and the road, increasing the risk of skidding. Question 3. When should a motorcyclist use the engine cutout switch? A. To save fuel when stationary. B. In emergencies only. C. We're never turning off the engine. Answer. B. In emergencies only. The engine cutout switch is designed for quick use in emergencies. Question 4. What should you do if your motorcycle starts to wobble or weave? A. Accelerate out of it. B. Grip the handlebars firmly and gradually slow down. C. Turn off the engine. Answer. B. Grip the handlebars firmly and gradually slow down. If a motorcycle starts to wobble, it's crucial to remain calm, grip the handlebars without fighting the movement, and gently decelerate. Question 5. When are motorcyclists most at risk of being in an accident? A. On long journeys. B. On unfamiliar roads. C. The first few minutes of a journey. Answer. C. The first few minutes of a journey. Many motorcycle accidents occur within the first few minutes due to riders not being fully alert or adjusted to the riding conditions. Question 6. Before overtaking another vehicle on a two-way road, what should you be especially aware of? A. Pedestrians crossing between vehicles. B. Vehicles turning right in front of you. C. Oncoming traffic. Answer. B. Vehicles turning right in front of you. Always be cautious as vehicles might not see you and could turn right, cutting you off. Question 7. What's the main reason for wearing bright clothing while riding a motorcycle? A. It looks fashionable. B. It keeps you warm. C. It makes you more visible to other road users. Answer. C. It makes you more visible to other road users. Wearing bright or fluorescent clothing during the day and reflective clothing at night greatly increases the chances of being seen. Question 8. Why is it essential to regularly check the tread depth on your motorcycle tires? A. It's a legal requirement. B. To maintain optimal grip and handling. C. To improve fuel efficiency. Answer. B. To maintain optimal grip and handling. Proper tread depth ensures that the motorcycle has good traction with the road, especially in wet conditions. Question 9. When is it especially important to use your mirrors while riding? A. Before changing your speed. B. When you're stopped at traffic lights. C. Only when overtaking. Answer. A. Before changing your speed. Checking mirrors before changing speed helps ensure there's no one too close behind you or trying to overtake. Question 10. When riding in strong winds, what should you be especially prepared for when emerging from behind a protective barrier? A. A sudden gust of wind. B. Reduced visibility due to dust. C. Noise from the wind. Answer. A. A sudden gust of wind. Emerging from a protective barrier like a building or large vehicle can expose you to sudden wind gusts, which could destabilize the motorcycle. Question 11. How can you reduce your risk of collision when approaching a right-hand bend? A. Accelerate through the bend. B. Position yourself close to the center line. 
C. Keep to the left side of your lane. Answer. C. Keep to the left side of your lane. This position gives you the best view of the road ahead and gives oncoming traffic a better view of you. Question 12. Why should you avoid using only your front brake when slowing down or stopping on a slippery surface? A. It could cause the rear wheel to lift. B. It could cause the front wheel to lock. C. The brake light won't activate. Answer. B. It could cause the front wheel to lock. Locking the front wheel, especially on a slippery surface, can lead to a loss of control. Question 13. Where might you find a contrafo bus and cycle lane? A. On a dual carriageway. B. On a one-way street. C. On a roundabout. Answer. B. On a one-way street. A contraflow lane means buses and cycles can travel in the opposite direction to other traffic. Question 14. What's the most critical reason for avoiding sudden movements when riding in a tunnel? A. The echoing noise can be disorienting. B. There might be dirt or oil on the road. C. The light at the end of the tunnel can affect your vision. Answer. B. There might be dirt or oil on the road. Tunnels can have a buildup of oil and dirt, which can reduce traction, making sudden movements risky. Question 15. How should you use your brakes when riding on a wet road? A. Brake harder with the front brake. B. Brake in short, sharp bursts. C. Apply both brakes gently. Answer. C. Apply both brakes gently. Using both brakes gently reduces the risk of skidding on wet roads. Question 16. How can you make your motorcycle less visible to others at night? A. By using dipped headlights. B. By wearing dark clothing. C. By riding in the middle of the lane. Answer. B. By wearing dark clothing. Wearing dark clothing makes you less visible to others. For safety, you should wear reflective clothing and use proper lighting. Question 17. Before you start a journey, why should you check that the lights on your motorcycle are working? A. To ensure you can see the road clearly. B. To avoid causing glare to other drivers. C. So that others can see you. Answer C. So that others can see you. Ensuring your lights work properly increases your visibility to other road users, especially in poor light or nighttime conditions. Question 18. When you're waiting to emerge from a junction, what should you be especially aware of concerning motorcycles? A. They have a louder engine noise. B. They may be filtering between lanes. C. They might be approaching faster than you think. Answer. C. They might be approaching faster than you think. Due to their smaller size, it can be hard to judge a motorcycle's speed and distance. Question 19. In strong winds, why might you need to allow extra room when overtaking a cyclist? A. The wind can push them off course. B. They might speed up in the wind. C. The wind can make your motorcycle faster. Answer. A. The wind can push them off course. Cyclists are more vulnerable to being blown off their path by sudden wind gusts. Question 20. What should you do if you're following a vehicle that's showing a green flag or green flashing beacon? A. Overtake immediately. B. Prepare for the vehicle to slow down or stop at the roadside. C. Follow closely as it's leading you to a safer route. Answer. B. Prepare for the vehicle to slow down or stop at the roadside. A green flag or flashing beacon indicates a slow-moving vehicle, possibly an agricultural one, that might stop or turn unexpectedly. Question 21. Which road users are especially at risk if a motorcycle is approaching them from behind too fast? A. Pedestrians crossing the street. B. 
cyclists moving off or turning. C. Drivers parked at the side of the road. Answer. A. Pedestrians crossing the street. Due to the smaller size and quiet nature of motorcycles, pedestrians may not notice or misjudge their approach speed. Question 22. When you see the blue motorway service sign, what services are available? A. Fuel, food and restrooms. B. Vehicle repair and towel service. C. Motorcycle only parking areas. Answer. A. Fuel, food and restrooms. Motorway service areas provide essential facilities for travelers, including fuel, food options and restrooms. Question 23. What's the minimum depth of tread required for motorcycle tires over 50 C in the central three quarters of the breadth of the tread? A. 2 mm. B. 1 mm. C. 3 mm. Answer. B. 1 mm. The minimum legal tread depth for motorcycle tires over 50 C is 1 mm in the central three quarters of the breadth of the tread. Question 24. When overtaking another vehicle on a two-way road, what should you be especially aware of? A. Pedestrians crossing between vehicles. B. Vehicles turning right in front of you. C. Oncoming traffic. Answer. B. Vehicles turning right in front of you. Always be cautious, as vehicles might not see you and could turn right, cutting you off. Question 25. Why is it crucial for motorcyclists to take extra care when riding at dawn or dusk? A. The roads are busy at these times. B. Other drivers might be fatigued. C. It can be harder for other drivers to see you. Answer C. It can be harder for other drivers to see you. Low light conditions at dawn and dusk can make it more challenging for other road users to see motorcyclists. Question 26. When might you need to react more slowly than usual when riding your motorcycle? A. On a dry, sunny day. B. When carrying a pillion passenger. C. After checking your mirrors. Answer. B. When carrying a pillion passenger. The added weight can affect the motorcycle's handling and braking, requiring more time and distance to react. Question 27. What should you do if your motorcycle starts to skid on a wet road? A. Release the brakes fully. B. Steer in the direction of the skid. C. Apply more throttle. Answer. B. Steer in the direction of the skid. If you start to skid, it's essential to steer into the direction of the skid to regain control. Question 28. When following another vehicle in rain, why should you increase your following distance? A. To avoid spray from the vehicle in front. B. To give you a better view of road markings. C. Because your stopping distance increases. Answer. C. Because your stopping distance increases. Wet roads can significantly increase the distance required to stop, so it's crucial to leave more space between you and the vehicle in front. Question 29. Why should you be cautious when passing horse riders? A. Horses can be unpredictable and might get frightened. B. Horses are slower and might delay you. C. Horses can damage the road surface. Answer. A. Horses can be unpredictable and might get frightened. When a motorcycle passes suddenly or at high speed, it could spook the horse, causing a danger to both the rider and you. Question 30. When riding in town, why should you be especially cautious of buses and trams? A. They may have passengers getting on or off. B. They always have right of way. C. They use different road signals. Answer. A. They may have passengers getting on or off. Passengers might not always look when getting off, and they could step into your path. Question 31. How can drinking alcohol affect your ability to ride your motorcycle? A. It can improve your reflexes. B. 
It can make you overconfident and take risks. C. It helps you focus better. Answer. B. It can make you overconfident and take risks. Alcohol can impair judgment, reduce coordination and slow reaction times. Question 32. In which situation should you avoid overtaking another vehicle? A. When you're approaching a level crossing. B. When you're traveling downhill. C. When the vehicle in front is exceeding the speed limit. Answer. A. When you're approaching a level crossing, it's hazardous as you might not have a clear view of the tracks or the timings of approaching trains. Question 33. What should you do if you're riding in heavy traffic and you start to feel tired? A. Continue riding until you reach your destination. B. Stop in a safe place and rest. C. Increase your speed to get out of the traffic. Answer. B. Stop in a safe place and rest. Riding while fatigued can greatly reduce your reaction times and judgment, increasing the risk of an accident. Question 34. Why should you be cautious when passing high-sided vehicles on windy days? A. They might block your view of the road. B. They can be affected by sudden wind gusts. C. They create turbulence which can affect your balance. Answer. B. They can be affected by sudden wind gusts. High-sided vehicles can be pushed by the wind, making their movements unpredictable. Question 35. True or false? Wearing leather clothing can protect you from some injuries in a collision. Answer. True. Leather provides a protective layer between you and the road, reducing the risk of abrasions and some other injuries. Question 36. What should you do if your motorcycle's throttle sticks open? A. Continue riding until it releases. B. Turn off the ignition using the cutout switch. C. Apply the front brake only. Answer. B. Turn off the ignition using the cutout switch. This will safely shut off the engine and stop the acceleration. Question 37. If your motorcycle has a sidecar, how will it affect the handling? A. It will make turning in all directions easier. B. It will make turning towards the sidecar more difficult. C. It will make turning away from the sidecar more difficult. Answer. B. It will make turning towards the sidecar more difficult. The weight and balance change can make turning towards the sidecar more challenging. Question 38. What should you do if you're involved in an incident where someone is injured? A. Leave the scene and report it later. B. Stop and call for emergency services. C. Offer the injured person a ride to the hospital. Answer. B. Stop and call for emergency services. It's crucial to get medical help immediately and remain at the scene until the authorities arrive. Question 39. Why should you be especially cautious when riding your motorcycle on roads covered with loose gravel? A. It can reduce your visibility due to dust. B. It can reduce the grip between your tires and the road. C. It can damage your motorcycle's paintwork. Answer. B. It can reduce the grip between your tires and the road. Loose gravel can be unstable and increase the risk of skidding. Question 40. When should you use your motorcycle's horn in a built-up area? A. To greet someone you know. B. To show your frustration. C. To warn others of your presence. Answer. C. To warn others of your presence. The primary purpose of the horn is to alert other road users, not for personal expressions. Question 41. How does carrying a pillion passenger affect your motorcycle's handling? A. It makes it more stable during turns. B. It has no effect. C. It can make the motorcycle less stable and increase braking distances. Answer. C. It can make the motorcycle less stable and increase braking distances. 
the added weight can change the balance and handling of the motorcycle. Question 42. What's the primary purpose of motorcycle ABS, anti-lock braking system? A. To allow for fast acceleration. B. To prevent the wheels from locking up during hard braking. C. To reduce fuel consumption. Answer. B. To prevent the wheels from locking up during hard braking. AB this helps maintain traction and control during sudden stops. Question 43. True or false? It's safe to ride on the hard shoulder of a motorway to avoid a traffic jam. Answer. False. The hard shoulder is for emergencies only and not for regular travel or overtaking. Question 44. How can carrying a heavy load on your motorcycle affect its handling? A. It makes it more stable at high speeds. B. It doesn't affect handling. C. It can make it less stable, especially during turns. Answer. C. It can make it less stable, especially during turns. A heavy load, especially if not properly balanced, can significantly alter the motorcycle's dynamics. Question 45. When should you use your motorcycle's rear brake? A. Only in emergencies. B. In conjunction with the front brake for balanced stopping. C. Never, as it's not effective. Answer. B. In conjunction with the front brake for balanced stopping. Using both brakes provides the most effective and controlled stopping power. Question 46. When parking your motorcycle on the road at night, what should you do? A. Park in the direction of the traffic flow. B. Park facing against the traffic flow. C. It doesn't matter as long as you're visible. Answer. A. Park in the direction of the traffic flow. This ensures maximum visibility and reduces confusion for other road users. Question 47. When should you avoid using your motorcycle's front brake? A. When riding downhill. B. When the road is wet. C. When making slow turns or maneuvers. Answer. C. When making slow turns or maneuvers. Using the front brake during slow maneuvers can easily cause the motorcycle to tip. Question 48. Which lights should you use on your motorcycle when riding in fog? A. High beam headlights. B. Low beam headlights and fog lights if fitted. C. Just the rear brake light. Answer. B. Low beam headlights and fog lights if fitted. High beams in fog can cause glare, making it harder for you to see and for others to see you. Question 49. True or false? You should use the same tire pressures for solo riding as when carrying a passenger. Answer. False. Carrying a passenger or heavy load usually requires increased tire pressure to ensure safe and stable handling. Question 50. Before every journey, why should you check your motorcycle's brakes? A. To ensure they aren't too sharp. B. To make sure they're working effectively. C. Because regular checking can extend their lifespan. Answer. B. To make sure they're working effectively. It's essential for safety to ensure your brakes are in good working order before setting off.